So on to week three. Uh, she begins this week looking at anger. We don't want, we don't want to act out in anger. We want to use it as a fire, you know, to be more creative. Some people do act out in anger, but those of us, you know, me and you, we're nice people. So what we do with anger, we stuff it, we deny it, we bury it, block it, hide it, lie about it, medicate it, muffle it, or ignore it. We do everything but listen to it, which is what we should be doing. We need to use that anger to push us forward. For example, a pretty long time ago, I had just become a production supervisor and we were in a meeting and our manager is looking for volunteers to do some kind of training. He didn't really know what it was. We had no clue. And he was looking for four or five volunteers. But me, I was still an introvert, but then I was extremely introverted. Didn't speak up in meetings. So when he asked for volunteers, there's no way. I wasn't gonna volunteer. But then something happened. Another manager tried to volunteer a supervisor that wasn't even there. I don't know, I just got mad at myself. I got angry and thinking, what the heck? Why, you know, why can't I just, I can do this. That anger actually fueled me to, and very reluctantly, my hand went up. And I can honestly say that that one decision is to change the trajectory of my entire career. And it all has to do with that angry that the person that wasn't even at the meeting was being volunteered and I didn't have the guts to do it myself. So my wife brought me along to Ross today, but it's not just because she wanted to hang out with me. It's because on Tuesdays, 15% off if you're over 55. I am, she's not. I walked around a little bit and ended up in a section that had art supplies. That's all it took. I bought a sketchbook. And then we're on to synchronicity. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. And this is where that synchronicity comes in. And answered prayer is, scary because now we've got that responsibility and i know exactly what she's talking about those wishes and dreams when they come true it can be scary and intimidating when i had a corporate job every day on the way to work i would drive past a coin laundromat i would look in there and dream about how easy that must be i mean you collect coins you don't have to be there all the time how bad could it be the rest of the way to work i would dream about owning one 20 years later that dream came true. The morning that the sale closed, my wife and I met the seller to get the keys and complete the transfer. As we were finishing up, we hear that distinct sound of a change machine. We watched this guy walk over and fill a washer full of dirty clothes. We just looked at each other and smiled. That was our first customer as laundromat owners. And then suddenly, I had a serious pit in my stomach. My heart started racing, I'm like, crap, I own this thing now. I'm responsible for this place. I have to take care of these customers. I have to take care of these machines. I mean, strangers are gonna come to me and pay to use my laundry equipment to do their own laundry. All that flew through my head in an instant and my heart was in my throat. I was seriously terrified. But in the book, she does mention that quote, when you take a leap, the net will appear. Sure, there was fear, there was even a flood and a fire. And oh, the headaches of dealing with customers. Well, I left and everything turned out okay. I've been sitting on the sketchbook for about a week now. The time has come. The refusal to be creative is self-will and is counter to our true nature. I just can't get that out of my head. I need to start being creative. And then she goes into shame. This book was written before the keyboard warriors were a thing. You know, those harsh critics that can say some pretty strong stuff hiding behind the anonymity of the internet. And they could sit in mommy's basement and write whatever they want. Do you think they would say those same things in person? It's doubtful. And I think we need to remember that. I mean, I'm not opposed to criticism, especially if it's useful or pushes me in a different direction. It's just that unhelpful, they need a life person that just has nothing better to do but criticize others. Their life is probably bad enough that that makes them feel better. And this type of criticism, it says a lot more about the person doing the criticizing than it does about the, I'm harsh enough on myself, I don't need some 
internet stranger hyping up and telling me what he thinks, right? Uh, basically, we need to be able to sort through all the criticism we get and just sort out the useful stuff from just the garbage. And she ends the chapter with growth. Uh, we, just, we can't expect things to just happen overnight or even just a steady progression. I mean, you've heard the phrase, two steps forward, one step back. And I'm sure that's the way it's going to be for my art when I start. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure things aren't just going to be just a steady increase in how I create. I'm just going to keep pushing forward. I'm in the middle of week four, but I'm editing my video for week three. And just wanted to add, my motivation has gone up and down. Some days I feel motivated to create, other days I don't. I created these three images just out of my head, just because they were easy. Mahalo. Thanks for watching. See you next time.